800 rounds a minute thanks to your gun, according to Justice Brown Jackson. Rate of fire played a major role in the United States Supreme Court argument just the other day in the Cargill versus Merrick Garland ATF case over whether or not a bump stock is a machine gun as defined by federal statute. This is an important point. There was a lot discussed about rate of fire, but the truth is it's not even relevant to this case because it doesn't touch fingers with the federal definition of ma machine gun. But that doesn't mean that the anti-gun community doesn't want to conflate things. You're going to see how this plays out with the tapes I'm about to play from the argument itself, the U.S. Supreme Court. Stay tuned. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of many books, including Disarm, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. All right, folks, so major oral argument this week. You know about that in the Cargill versus Merrick Garland ATF case. I've told you this is going to be a close case. It should be an easy win for us, uh, for the Second Amendment community, but could be a little bit close case, I think, because of some of the confusion that may have occurred during the argument itself. Uh, but I think we'll still be okay at the end of the day. But let us talk about some of the specific games. And this is an extremely important video because it illustrates one of the games tactics of the anti-gunners that you need to be aware of for not just now but down the road specifically just as a reminder of what the federal statute says and then i'm going to tell you how there's game games getting played to try to rewrite the statute without actually going back to congress so here's the reality the issue in the cargill case is whether or not a bump stock device when you attach it to a semi-automatic rifle somehow converts that semi-automatic rifle into a machine gun, thus making the bump stock a machine gun in some way. Now, to do that, of course, you have to actually look at the federal statutory definition of what is a machine gun. And this is very important. And when you compare what I'm about to read with the back and forth going on between the Joe Biden Department of Justice lawyer on the one hand and some of the justices on the other hand, you're going to be confused as to why they're talking about what they're talking about, given the definition in the statute of a machine gun. Specifically, under the National Firearms Act that was enacted in 1934, it defines a machine gun as, quote, any weapon which shoots or is designed to shoot automatically, automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. A single function of the trigger. Very important language there. So that's the definition. Now, why did I just read that to you and why do you care? Here's why. I'm going to play you some clips from the oral argument in Cargill. And what I want you to listen for is keep that definition of machine gun in the back of your mind, a single function of the trigger and automatically, right, without having to manually reload, okay? Here's the kicker. When you listen to what was discussed, you're going to ask yourself, why are they talking about the rate of fire? Where do the words rate of fire or rapid firing come into play in the statute of a machine gun? Why is this occurring? We know why this is occurring. That the anti-gun community, the Biden administration, the anti-gun justices on the Supreme Court, including Justice Brown Jackson, for example, and Justice Kagan, they want to rewrite the definition of machine guns in a way that's broader to encompass more guns and make it harder to, you know, they want to thwart gun rights in America. They want to get rid of the Second Amendment. They don't even think we have a Second Amendment individual rights. And you're going to see this back and forth illustrating my point. Let's start off with Justice Brown Jackson and listen to how she talks about ready for this how the function of the trigger the single function of the trigger refers to of the purpose of the trigger and in her view you're not going to believe this because she said it not me it gives rise to 800 rounds a second 800 rounds a second listen to the clip right now so but i guess i'm wondering what, what i thought your answer was going to be we don't think it matters because of something you said in the intro which was that's uh, these are the, uh, the kind of weapons that Congress were, was intending to prohibit because of the damage they cause or something like that. Like, I read the word function to be doing significant work in this statute. And when, you know, function is defined, it's really not about the operation of the thing. It's about what it can achieve, what it's being used for. So I see Congress as putting function in this. The function of this trigger is to cause this kind of damage, 800 rounds a second or whatever. 
So there you have it. Just as Brown Jackson is trying to equate the single function of a trigger, right? The, that's the idea, the single function of the trigger. And we're going to have another video about the grammar and uh, of that sentence, but not for this purposes. But she's trying to say that the function of the trigger is to shoot 800 rounds a second, which is absurd, but that's what she's trying to say in that statement. But then she carries on. She again talks about rapidity, the rate of fire, which as you can see is very important to Justice Brown Jackson. But why is she talking about the rate of fire when if you read the definition of machine gun, there is no reference again to rate of fire, number of rounds, anything like that. It, because remember, you can fire a fully automatic machine gun, a, a real fully automatic machine gun, slowly, but it still is a machine gun. Like if it's, again, if you if you are holding a machine gun and it fires automatically with a single pull of that trigger, one round a minute, it's a slow rate of fire, right? But it's still a machine gun because again, it's an automatic device in that context. So rate of fire is irrelevant. Nevertheless, Brown Jackson wants to keep harping on it. Another reference to 800 rounds elsewhere in the transcript. Here's what she says. That Congress enacted. Right. And so how about anything in which the trigger functions in the same way? And by function, I don't know that that necessarily means it has to move in the same way. It has to operate in the same way. It can function in the same way insofar as it automatically allows for 800 rounds to be released. And by the way, that's not the last time she talked about the number 800 rounds. In this case, she references 800 bullets. Let's just play it for completeness sake. Justice Jackson, yet again. Sorry, 800, 800 bullets. I, I, the, the conversation with Justice Kagan suggested that through a bump, bump stock, you can achieve the same kinds of result in terms of the amounts of bullets that are being uh, ejected. I should be fair here. Now, it's not just Justice Brown Jackson talking about the rate of fire. Justice Gorsuch actually had questions about the high rate of fire achievable through bump stocks. Here's what Justice Gorsuch asked about the rate of fire. That, okay, maybe in 1934, function of the trigger meant the firing. With the, 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 the essential thing that causes the weapon to fire. But the high rate of fire that's achievable through bump stocks is effectively the equivalent, and we should take cognizance of that. Your thoughts. And it's not just Justice Gorsuch or Justice Jackson. Justice Kagan, who's the cagiest liberal on the court, she's got to be very careful of her. She's extremely intelligent, very savvy, and is the kind of liberal that is capable of winning over conservative votes. So we got to be very careful of Justice Kagan. Even she makes reference to the fact that the bump stock is the same as an automatic machine gun and in regards to a massive number of bullets that comes out. Here's Justice Kagan during the argument and what she says. Uh, bullets. And that's exactly what's happening here. You push the bump stock. Now, you're, you're saying, well, maybe they didn't define the bump stock as the trigger, but, but it, it functions in precisely the same way. And a torrent of bullets comes out. And this is in the heartland of what they were concerned about, which is anything that takes just a little human action to produce more than one shot is what they were getting at. Now, what did the government have to say? Well, the Department of Justice obviously did a lot of talking, and we're going to play different parts of it in the next series of videos. And I'll put a transcript, a link to the transcript down below. You can check out the whole transcript for yourself, as well as the audio of the entire argument if you're interested. But what does the DOJ lawyer say? Well, first of all, he admits, and here's what's critically important, he admits as a matter of law that the rate of fire is absolutely irrelevant to whether or not a bump stock is a machine gun in terms of the statutory terms. He admits that rate of fire or the rapidity of firing is irrelevant to the statutory definition. Here's Joe Biden's Department of Justice making this critical admission, which is inevitable and had to be made because it's true. Here is what he says about the rate of fire. Again, I, I think rates of fire are important, but we acknowledge this is not a rate of fire statute. It's a function statute. But the function was, are you able to fire multiple shots without multiple manual movements? And I think the rate of fire is powerful evidence that there are not multiple manual movements going on here. So what does all this mean? What you're seeing here is the sort of sleight of hand that I'm able to pick up on. I think the sophisticated justices on the court will pick up on this. What's going on here is you see the Department of Justice under uh, Joe Biden is admitting that statutorily the rate of fire, the number of rounds that leave that barrel of a, of a firearm, is not relevant 
to the definition of a machine gun, which is simply a weapon that shoots or is designed to shoot automatically uh, without the need of reloading due to a single function of the trigger. That's the definition. So they have to win that the gun is firing automatically, right? Repeatedly, automatically, and through a single function of the trigger and what that means. None of that refers to, again, the rate of fire. But as you can see, despite that admission, say, oh yeah, it's not in the statute, there's a lot of colloquy here between the Department of Justice and the justices trying to, in my view, conflate those things and try to rewrite the congressional statute through judicial fiat to essentially get to that outcome without having to send the case back to Congress to rewrite the statute or do nothing, which is what they will likely do. And that will be a good thing because the last thing we want, by the way, and this is my warning to you, the last thing we want is for Congress to try to redefine the definition of a machine gun to include a bump stock because they're likely going to start redefining a machine gun in a way that will be extremely bad for semi-automatic firearms and for other firearms because they will certainly broaden that definition to encompass a lot more things. Arguably, anything that makes a semi-automatic weapon fire more is what they fire faster, like a better trigger, for example. They will try to weave into the definition of machine gun if Congress tries to redefine this law, which is what constitutionally they should have to do as opposed to letting the ATF do their dirty work. Uh, but the reality is I don't think they can get that law enacted, but we got to watch out for that down the road. So the bottom line is um, here is where the DOJ is trying to conflate something that's not in the statute rate of fire and try to blend it in so they can win their case using something that's totally irrelevant and not even referenced in the statute. But you can see this sort of sleight of hand going on right here and right now. And you need to watch these techniques and learn from them so when you see it in your community, in, in meetings that you're involved with, with laws that are being proposed in, in your jurisdiction, wherever you live, you catch on to these tactics and strategies by the anti-gun movement and the Biden administration so they don't dupe you with the same sorts of things that we're watching in that argument in the Cargill versus Merrick Garland ATF case involving the bump stock. So there you have it. All right, folks, hope you're learning a little bit something about these videos I'm putting out now here at the Four Boxes Diner. Make sure you follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. And don't forget to subscribe and resubscribe and resubscribe here so you, can, in case you don't get knocked off. We don't want that to happen. And we will see you again soon enough here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.